Hello, it's Martin back with the company issued mini in the cold. We had a cold spell in the UK. I did a lot of testing and for such a small and relatively simple vehicle by modern EV standards, it does really, really well in the cold. So let me show you what I mean by that, because I did the thing you're not meant to do. Yes, plugged in with low state of charge, that's good, but with a completely cold battery pack. It's about three degrees Celsius this morning, and the temperature of the battery was not far off that. And unlike some other modern EVs, even though the Mini shows chargers in the sat-nav system, if you navigate to one, the battery will not precondition, and there is no manual way to force the battery preconditioning either. Now, Fastnet is a great charging operator, reliable chargers, very aggressive pricing by 2024 standards, at least in the UK, at 69 pence per kilowatt hour. And most importantly, they have charging curves for pretty much all cars right on their website, which comes in very handy. But obviously, the mini one is long established, but let's see how the cold charging session compares to 80 90%. I do have this OBD reader plugged in, which means that on top of the information which you would normally see in the dashboard, which is a little bit limited, we can take a look at all the nerdy stats, like for example, battery temperature and how much power is actually going into the battery. As expected, it definitely started off slow. I wasn't getting much more than 15 kilowatts, but now we are up to 30 kilowatts and the temperature in the battery has increased to very reasonable 16 degrees Celsius. And if you look at the session data here at the charging station, you see that that's also delivering about 30 kilowatts. In the beginning, there was actually quite a big discrepancy between what the battery was taking in and how much the charge was providing. And as with any rapid charging session, there are some losses along the way, but this was much more significant, about three, four kilowatts. So I think the Mini fired up the battery heater to get the temperature up as quickly as possible, but now it's happy with where it's at and it will just keep warming up naturally because of the charging process happening. It has only been about 13 minutes so far and we are already above 37%. So what I will do, I will just keep logging the data on the iPad so we can draw up a curve and establish exactly how well the Mini does in these conditions. 23 minutes in and we just reached 60%. And if we look at the iPad data, you can see that the battery is taking 46 kilowatts thanks to pulling 120 amps. At this point, I'm fairly certain that we are on the established curve or at least very close to it. So I will still keep monitoring and report back with all the data. And by the way, yes, I'm plugged into a 300 kilowatt charger, but the Mini can only take a peak of 50. So this is completely normal and how it should be. I let the charge keep going all the way to 93%, which took 42 minutes, which I would say considering the conditions and the depth of the charge is actually quite a reasonable number. And now you join me back home in my living room slash kitchen so we can analyze the results. I will put the full obtained charging curve on the screen now so you can take a look at it. Pause the video if you want to study it in detail, but it doesn't really mean much in isolation. So let me bring in the fastnet curve so we can compare the differences. As discussed outside, the beginning while the battery was cold was a bit sluggish, but from basically 50% onwards, the car started following the optimum charging curve. The takeaways from this are that despite the slow start, the, in this case, 16 to 80 percent still took only 31 minutes. Normally we talk about 10 to 80 percent in terms of rapid charging. That for the Mini, according to the EV database, takes only 29 minutes. So you're realistically paying about a 5 to maximum 10 minute penalty for charging in these colder conditions. And that's what I'm saying that the Mini is quite good because there are many even modern electric cars where if you plug them in from a cold start, the charging time basically doubles. And the second thing to keep in mind is that the magic number in case you want to maximize your charging speed is about 26 degrees Celsius. That's when the battery management system is happy to provide full charging power and follow the optimal charging curve. And don't be too scared because even though we started at about 8 degrees Celsius in the battery pack, if you just drive for about 20 miles on the motorway, that will definitely bring the temperature up to at least 20 degrees Celsius. So we won't notice any charging power degradation. I've also done a similar session in even colder conditions when the battery was at 3 degrees Celsius. I don't have the full charging curve for that, but it was very much a similar story. The battery started taking about 10, 11 kilowatts, fired up the battery heater, which was running on top of the charge going into the battery itself, and the charging power very quickly built up to about 20, 30, and eventually 40 kilowatts. 
What about an opposite scenario? What if you want to keep your cabin warm after you have been driving for a long time, have done multiple charging sessions and the battery is already warm? This shouldn't be too big of an issue for most electric cars, but the i3 specifically, which the Mini shares a lot of underpinnings with and technology, used to struggle with this because it was impossible to cool the battery during rapid charging and keep the heat running to heat up the passenger compartment. So let's see how the Mini does. The sun has set, the cabin has cooled down, we are at 28%, but if we look at the OBD data, you will see that the battery is still quite warm at 23 degrees Celsius, because this will be today's third rapid charging session. So let me just turn off the vehicle and get the charging started. And let's take a look inside at the stats. So 28%, it's talking to the charger and we are officially charging. The charging power is ramping up and this, what the charger is showing, is what's actually going through the cable into the car, including losses and any extra energy needed for conditioning the battery. Whereas if we look at the OBD readout, that's only what's actually going into the battery itself. And to be fair, this is the kind of power you expect. At 32%, that's no problem. You see, so that drummed up nicely. So if I jump back in, as the voltage is increasing, so is the charging power, charging at about 120 amps, so that's not too bad. And the easiest way of turning on the climate control is going into the auxiliary climate tab and clicking activate now. So that wakes up the HVAC system. And while you're inside, it actually gives you full control of it. The fans, are now ramping up and just for the sake of demonstration purposes let's crank it all the way up to 28 degrees celsius the nice thing about this auxiliary climate control is that even if you open the door and turn off the ignition it will keep on heating the cabin but you see the battery power is pretty much unaffected still charging at about 40 kilowatts but the charger itself is providing 46 kilowatts and this is what we love to see it means two things really First, that the heater is placed parallel with the battery, which means that during a charging session like this, the battery can take whatever it should take. And instead of the heater then immediately taking power from the battery, it's still pulling power from the grid. In case of older EVs like this Mini as well, I'm afraid, they are limited to the CCS1 standard, which means that there is a current limit of 125 amps. So that's the reason why the charging power went down ever so slightly because the car decided to prioritize the cabin comfort as well. But it's the important thing because it has literally been going on for about 30 seconds and it's really properly hot in here. But the battery management system is not complaining at all about the temperature that's still within reason. 30 degrees Celsius is perfectly acceptable and the battery is charging at 45 kilowatts. If you did this in the BMW i3 the charging rate would literally plummet and you would probably be stuck at the charger for twice as long, so you can choose with the i3. Are you going to be cold and quick, or will you stay comfortable, but then it will take really much, much longer. Whereas here, it has a minimal impact. The only limitation is the 125 amp bottleneck. And just to reiterate with another example, the state of charge after a couple of minutes has gone up to 55%. The battery is receiving 45 kilowatts, but the charger, is providing 48 kilowatts so obviously there are some heat losses along the way in the cables and so on but realistically the heater is taking at least two kilowatts which is plenty enough to keep the cabin warm i have enough now so i'm fine to unplug but as with any of these tests it's important to mention that your mileage may vary quite richly in these cases because for example if the ambient temperature is different if the temperature of the battery is different the car may decide to allocate the heating, cooling, etc. differently, but it's definitely significantly better than at least the BMW i3. In the three months I had it, I've been taking lots of notes, experimenting with different temperatures, and I have never seen any overheating. The worst I got was a little bit of a charge derating, probably because of the 125 amp limit. To be fair, I think one of the biggest reasons why the Mini and the i3 are very called resilient is because they have quite a bit of cobalt in the battery chemistry mix. I know not the best ethically and environmentally speaking, but look, these cars are already out there in the market, on the roads have been made, so you might as well take advantage of the situation. And I think that's a good point to wrap up the video on. 
you may be thinking, hold on, what about range? That's what most people are worried about. How much range do you sacrifice in winter conditions? Well, make sure to subscribe because I have a dedicated video coming out soon where I compare the range of the Mini in different weather conditions. Not just how temperature affects it, but also rain and so on. So, make sure to not miss that one out. Otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you found the information helpful and I will catch you in the next one.